Before I applied for the job, I was a little like you. I came for a visit, I walked around the school, I saw as much as I could, I talked to as many people as I could find, I had a tour with the boys, and I can tell you this, I'm still here. <laughs> what I got from that day was a clear understanding that HBS was a thriving community. One as outlined in all these presentations of care, support and genuine kindness. It is through community underpinned with enthusiasm and positivity and a strong personal relationship that every child can thrive. It's a community founded on that kindness and good human values. I make no apologies for holding being a thoroughly decent human being as one of the most if not the most important criterion in raising my own children and in the children I teach. In a world where we need good positive role models, I hold honesty, integrity and decency as prerequisites in life. I started my career as a sportsman, a rugby player and a sports centre assistant manager. But it was quite clear that education was at the heart of everything I wanted to do. And I quickly moved to Barnet and went on to lead pastoral care at Queen Elizabeth's Boys School. And most recently as deputy head at Sherman School for Boys. There's a theme. I know boys. If my oldest son is anything to go by, you feed them, run them, and then hide their mobile phones. No, but seriously, I've worked with boys for 25 years, and I understand their behaviour, their need for clarity and boundaries. Boys need to feel safe. However, I reject the phrase, boys, will be boys. Not just because it excuses behaviours that undermine our values, but because it creates an opportunity to lower expectation and then not fulfil their potential in whatever areas they wish to explore. We need to understand that they will push the limits, but it's through having clarity and clear boundaries that we can educate. As a parent, I have had that call where my son might have got it wrong. It's not great, but the relationship between home and school is paramount. And I strongly believe that when home and school are aligned, when we avoid mixed messages, nothing is insurmountable. My knowledge of boys also applies to academics. They need to be challenged and pushed. They often learn differently. Mocks are sort of there to show you everything you have revised. Deadlines don't really exist. And if you can do it last minute, it'll be fine. And it's not all boys. They are all very different. But I do understand their attitude to learning. And I think with an insistence of the highest possible standards, an early exploration of aspiration, and understanding what it will be, and them understanding what it will be to get them there, they can reach their full potential. And most importantly, without being disappointed. It's not easy being young. It's not easy being old. <laughs> But I think life recently has thrown in difficult times. Social media, hashtag me too, COVID, cost of living, exam expectation, mental health concerns, anxiety, AI, the future of the planet. I've been around long enough to know that schools must constantly evolve. 
Whilst the tenets of education haven't changed, the challenges and the opportunities have. Schools are often at the forefront of managing those changes. Pupils, parents, staff, trustees, local and national community voice is paramount, of, of paramount importance. Because we all want them to do the very best they can do. Academically, in the co-curricular and extracurricular spheres, socially, and importantly, emotionally. But we must also understand there are numerous paths they can get, that can get them to where they wish to go. There is no one size fits all. Boys, you are all individuals. You are, and your ultimate success will look different depending on who you are. We will celebrate your personal achievements by supporting your talents, by supporting your needs, by following your aspirations. We will continually improve your experiences by creating a culture where it's not only okay to fail, but one where you see it as a way to continue to get better. Where you say, I can't do it, we will help you say, I can't do it yet. You will become resilient. Ultimately, if we are continually learning and developing, and sorry to return to sport, but the score takes care of itself. And as confidence grows, you will find opportunities to not only take part, but to lead. Leadership is something I feel enormously strongly about. In owning something and running with it, you will truly invest and grow into the future. In my time in schools, I've led in multiple areas of school life. I've met many amazing people. I'm clear that we, all of us, must work as a team. It is people who make a community. And I've been fortunate to meet pupils, parents and colleagues who have genuinely shaped the way I think and the way I behave. As you ask yourself, will he, or boys, I, be successful here, consider what that success looks like and seek the plethora of opportunities out there. Many we might not have thought of yet that you might bring here yourself and you will end up leading. I'm looking forward to starting at this fantastic school and I believe I will bring a positive, enthusiastic and progressive mindset through a belief in the strength of others building excellent personal relationships and giving time to everyone. I thank you for all your time and I hope it's not raining and I hope you have a safe trip. Thank you.